Did Apple CEO Tim Cook just drop a totally obvious hint to the governments of both China and the United States? In his letter to shareholders, where he warned about the drop in sales, he cited China multiple times, saying, among other things, we did not foresee the magnitude of the economic deceleration, particularly in greater China. And then he wrote, we believe the economic environment in China has been further impacted by rising trade tensions with the U.S. And then he also said, contraction in greater China's smartphone market has been particularly sharp, and on and on and on. I'm asking you guys, is Apple going to be the linchpin that forces both the Chinese and the U.S. to actually end the trade war sooner rather than later? And, and all the tariffs being bandied about right now, we're also asking to discuss it right now in a Fox Business exclusive with the Eurasia Group Geotechnology Director Kevin Allison, along with Dryden Pence, Pence Wealth Management's Chief Investment Officer. His Apple position stands at $28 million at the current price. Uh, uh, Kevin, I will begin with you. Do you get the sense that in that shareholder letter, Tim Cook was doing exactly what he intended, and that is to warn both governments, wrap this up quickly. If, if it's killing us and it's roiling these markets, the Dow is down 612 right now, that it's going to do worse uh, when everybody piles in. Well, there's no doubt that Apple's a politically significant company. Mm -hmm. it, not long ago, passed ExxonMobil as the biggest market cap company in the world, uh, along with some other tech companies, right? So if you think about it in terms of market cap, they're even bigger than big oil in terms of being political actors in the markets. And I think that, yes, I think that perhaps Apple might have been thinking that it would send some kind of signal to the administration. I think also it's just looking at the numbers and saying, Hey, look, this is really starting. The slowdown in China in demand for our phones is really hitting our business more than we thought. So I think you could look at it in two different ways. I think that certainly the tech industry would like for the tariffs, uh, the trade war tariffs to be resolved. Mm -hmm. But but again, it's worth remembering that this is an issue. This is not just a trade war. This is a strategic confrontation between the United States and China over the future of technology and who will dominate the technologies of the future. And I don't think that that goes away with the statement of any one company in the markets. Um, I, I tend to agree with that. But also, Dryden, I, exactly this issue, President Trump has said, and, and we've had a lot of Democrats in the past saying China is, is unfair in its trade practices and they're, they're stealing U.S. jobs, etc. This is <clears throat> bigger than just Apple, right? But that said, we know President Trump is extremely sensitive to uh, market machinations and movements. And he, he sees it almost as a reflection of his success. And, and he's proven that because every time it goes up, he's saying, yay, it's all me. And when it's down, it's the Fed, etc." Might it nudge him a little bit closer to making a deal? I think it's going to nudge. Thank you for having me on, Liz. I sure. think it's going to nudge both parties because it's very clear that the Chinese economy is slowing. And it's very clear that it's having effects in multi-levels. But I think both parties are in a situation where sooner or later someone's going to blink. And I think at this point, this is clear evidence when, when what he's really referencing is the slowing of the Chinese economy. Apple is a luxury good there. And you're seeing that as a significant movement. And I think it continues to put more pressure on China to begin to make some of the fundamental changes that need to be made, particularly in technology. And at this point, although it affects Apple's stock tremendously. The, the point of the matter is, is that Apple is tremendously robust and people underestimate how really large it is. And there was actually some good news in Tim Cook's letter about, about how the service sector is growing uh, and all of those revenues. So we think that this is, even though that this has been a rough point for Apple on this, they are still tremendously large. People don't realize how big they are and even their, sec their service sector is bigger than, than Adobe and Netflix and Salesforce combined. Yeah, look at this three-year picture, and you can see that right now with Apple down nine and two-thirds percent, it is definitely taking a hit. But I, I want to go back to Kevin here and ask you, is, is China the cause, or is it simply magnifying what has been something that other companies have seen in the past, and that is that Chinese companies are no longer El Cheapo entirely. Huawei and Xiaomi are two companies that, that make a very good phone, we don't like them here because we're not sure if they're putting things in there that can spy on us. But, um, you know, maybe this is just uh, the, the capitalistic market that's dinging Apple. 
Well, there's no question that Apple, like any other company, faces intense competition in China. Mm -hmm. And I think that, uh, that that's perfectly normal. I think that, that maybe that, that might be some kind of issue here. But I think you raise an interesting point with Huawei. This, again, comes back into the geopolitics of it. Geopolitically, Huawei has emerged as a kind of uh, company at the center of this U.S.-China confrontation. Uh, yeah. They're also one of the companies that's been competing with Apple in, in, in phones. So, uh, look, I think the, we're absolutely right that this is a test of wills. I think heading into this trade confrontation last year, both sides felt they had the upper hand. Uh, the Trump administration thought that she would feel weak and try to make a deal if the Chinese economy showed signs of wobbling. Mm -hmm. She thought that Trump cares about the markets, and when the markets start to wobble, he'll feel pressure to make a deal. Now it's a test of wills to see who can hold out through the pain the longest, and I think that We'll, we'll see. We have uh, the two sides are set to engage in face to face talks next week in Beijing over the tariff issues and trade issues. Uh, China has been dangling some concessions. Will that be enough for the trade hawks in the administration? Will the wobbles in the stock market over, right, over right. the past few weeks lead Trump to, to consider a deal? We'll, we'll find out more next week. Dryden, quickly, you know, you own Apple stock. You, you probably aren't happy today, but Warren Buffett has told us in the past, I like it when it falls. I want to buy more. I don't, I'll buy more when it's uh, 140. I'll buy more at 138. I mean, he didn't use those exact numbers with us, but he says each time it goes down, he wants to scoop up more. Are you buying today? Uh not today, but we bought. We have bought some very recently, mm -hmm. and and so the the point is, is that we like Apple at this pricing. When you recognize the tremendous amount, if you just take their cash and you just take their services, uh, that's a that's a huge amount of money uh, that this company makes, and people forget how large it is. So you're really kind of getting all of the iPhones, all of the i products, and all that stuff at this valuation for only about 25% you know, of the value of the company. So so there's a tremendous ramp that Apple has going forward. I think sooner or later in these trade wars, somebody blinks. And when that happens, you're going to see this, this price reaction that we've just had probably reverse itself. Yeah. Rubber, uh, so we're quite confident band in the company going yeah. forward. It'll, we'll see a snap we'll sh for sure about that. Good to see both of you. Thank you. Kevin and Dryden, we'll see you next time.